Okay, welcome. So I'm going to talk about tables today and how we're going to make these table forms. So um, we're going to learn about the pinch method as well as a hollowing out method of creating our table forms. Um, so I'm going to show you two brief videos on that so you guys can see the two methods that you can make them. There are many more. There are coil, slab, wheel, um, but we're going to focus on pinch because you did that with your pumpkins and then also on the um, method where you can um, hollow out the clay form, okay? So there are um, two really brief videos on, um, actually there's one video, I apologize, on hollowing out the form, and then I will demonstrate the pinch pot method. So this one, he shows hollowing out as well as the foot because you are gonna be doing a foot for this. So please just watch this. Four the sound quality is not great and he has a strong accent, but just watch. I wish you were at school so you could use one of these banding wheels, but unfortunately you'll just have to wing it unless you have like a lazy Susan at your house or you can fashion something like that. So he's applying texture from the start and he's using a lot more clay than we're going to use. For handling everything he says, and like that, not feeling oh, so so already nice shape, man. So we don't have that loop tool, but we're going to make something to today. If you want to do this hollowing method. If you were at school, you would have um, access to this. I'm actually going to mute it. Um, so because he's speaking in English, even though he's Chinese or Japanese, and then she's translating into German. Um, but he basically just hollowed out his form. If you do this method, I'll show you how you can kind of make a tool that will work with this. Um, but you want to make sure that it is not thicker than your thumb, like pinky width. If you do this, and including the base, you don't want to leave this really, really heavy. Um, I think the pinch pot's a little bit easier, but this is just a method that you guys can use to create a T-bowl form. And then you would have to definitely smooth those edges because they would become sharp because the tool is sharp. So now he's going to um, show the foot after he hollows it out a little bit more. He's weighing it. All right, now you can use a hairdryer if you're careful, but it can crack your piece, which could be kind of cool for a T-bowl. Um, but he firmed it up to leather hard. So what we're gonna do today is after you make your clay T-bowl, we'll leave it in the bag with the bag open a teeny bit so it becomes leather hard. But I did wanna show you that you will add a foot to your form as well today, okay? So I will demonstrate the next um, part, which is the T-bowl part, but I did just want to show you this one with the feet again, too. So you can just see a little bit more about how to create that foot form. This is the same um, idea. It's really hard to hear, so I'm going to kind of walk you through it. So again, we unfortunately don't have, you guys don't have one of these wheels at home to trim it. This is like trimming on the wheel. Um, like I said, if you have a Lazy Susan or something where you can fake it, a Lazy Susan is like this thing you spin things on. Grandma might have one. Um, but you guys can carve out feet as well. Um, you don't have to um, use the spinny thing. And then also I'm going to show you guys how you can add a foot. Excuse me. I got a little sneeze there. Um, so these are the different ways that you can create feet. You don't have to leave it just a coil. There are many, many ways you did that. And when you guys completed your sketches, you may have seen it. And then he's using a paddle. You guys don't have necessarily a paddle, but you do have your wood sticks that um, came with your kit. So those would work as well. So he's just showing variations on the feet. And you can watch the rest of the video on your own if you'd like. So my demonstration is going to be the pinch pot. Um, but I do want to show you how you guys can make that tool um, to hollow out if you choose. So we haven't talked much about the tools because you guys um, haven't been using the pottery wheel, but you guys are familiar with the wire cutter. You should have gotten a nylon one if you had your kit, otherwise you have a string. 
your scraper is serrated, which means it has sharp edges for scoring, but there are scrapers that are smooth that are metal. And then you don't have these in your kit. They are the ribbon or loop tools. So we're going to fake one, okay, if you want to. Um, it's also good for the carving activity that we're going to do Monday. So I'll show it to you today, and you can decide if it's something you want to make. You guys are familiar with the needle tool, but I stole them out of your kits because I didn't want you having them at home. Um, but you do have your stick. And then I gave all of you a sponge. And then the rib is really for the pottery wheel. And so is the wood knife. So you guys don't have those as well. But these are traditionally what come in a toolkit. Um, and if you take ceramics too, you will definitely be using some of those if you're not a senior. Okay, so my demonstration is going to kind of follow this. And this, there's a link to it in the presentation. So if you need to refer to this, you can come here and refer to it. And then it also talks about how to create your feet as well. So there is a link to that in the T-Bowl presentation right here. So it's slide 31. And then remember from your sketches, you have many different types of forms you can make. So I'm just gonna show you the basic form, but you guys can paddle it or change it into any of these forms. So I'm gonna show you the basic form and then if you want a taller foot. And then you'll definitely wanna consider the different type of feet that you can add to your T-Bowl. So you are required to make one T-Bowl but some of you might decide to make a second one. The first table that you make um, needs to consider the idea of wabi-sabi. So again, we're not gonna be drawing like specific flowers on it or symbols or things like that. We're gonna keep it really basic. So the process is you're gonna be making the pinch pot, um, thinking about the, the shape. So you can look at those pictures from the slideshow. Thinking about the thickness, so your pinky, if it's about a quarter, uh, not more than your thumb thickness. Um, try to make the walls, which are the sides of the pot and the base even, three inches about, okay? So not, I wouldn't say much taller than your fingers. Um, let the pot rest on its rim upside down today um, because the foot may not be very um, stable. And then um, be mindful and patient and put daily attention into it. So we're gonna start it today. And then, like I said, leave it in the bag um, with it open a teeny bit to get leather hard and then work on it more on Monday, okay? Always wrap your work in plastic, even if we're trying to get it leather hard. So here are the requirements. You shouldn't have really, really thick or really thin walls or sides of your pot. Um, the hand-built tables will be round on the bottom with a foot because they look more realistic and more comfortable. You need a smooth rim, otherwise it could get sharp in the firing. We are going to press and carve designs into our piece. So today we can press, and Monday when it's leather hard, we'll carve. Um, you want to consider those elements and principles of design that we talked about, form, texture, and when we talk about glaze next week, color. And then always think of that wabi-sabi aesthetic. So natural, earthy, that kind of thing for our form. And the surface decoration is the pressing into the clay and the glaze. Okay, so let's get back to the actual making of this. So I'm gonna turn my video on and I am going to begin uh, the demonstration of this. And you can do this with me or you can just watch and um, do it later, okay? So welcome everybody. I'm in the classroom today. So um, I just wanna show you these before I get started because the camera's in front of me. So this table here, it's a photo of it, has press designs in it, like the shell, like we did for our tiles. And so do these. This blade on here is called a celadon. Whoops, you can't see it. Okay, um, so today you can put press into it and then Monday carve, okay? So actually, if you do one or the other, that's fine. If you like the carved look better than the press look, that's okay. Um, but if you're gonna press into the clay, you have to do it today when it's soft. And remember the objects you press should be kind of natural looking objects so that um, it really is something that relates to that wabi-sabi thing. It's hard to tell, but there's a shell on the bottom there that you can kind of see, okay? So that, those are some of the ideas for pressing. So what I did, I'm gonna turn my um, computer here so you guys can see it better, is I found some of my objects from yesterday that I used for pressing into the clay. And those were the shell and the rock, okay? So whenever you start, remember the rules of working at home. Don't work on your bed. Try not to work on carpet. If you have to work on carpet, put plastic down and then a book and then a slab mat. Try to work on your slab mat or an old t-shirt, 
Okay, so I promised I would show you guys how you can fake a loop tool. This is a loop tool. It's used for hollowing and trimming. This is another loop tool. Okay, so we're going to fake it. If you have a paper clip at home, you can take it, and duct tape works the best. I have strapping tape. Regular scotch tape is not the best for it, and you put it a little bit up on it, and then use this really strong tape. This is strapping tape that's really strong, and tape it on, and you've got a makeshift loop tool, okay? Also, if any of you are really ambitious, maybe you have a job or a little bit of money, you can buy a kit at Michael's or Hobby Lobby for like eight bucks, and there are coupons online for 50% off, so you guys can um, maybe go and get some of those supplies. I'm sorry, I don't have one for all of you. The other thing that I gave you guys when you were here, though, is I gave you guys the serrated rib, so that is so much better than your stick, but if you don't have the serrated rib, you can use a fork for scoring, and then you have your slip, because you will be slipping and scoring later today. Okay, so you guys on the video, and when you guys did your sketches yesterday, you saw many, many T-bowl forms that you can use as inspiration to create it. You might do a winter T-bowl or a summer T-bowl. It may just turn out that way by how, by how you're making it. The other tool that you might use today is your stick as a paddle, your paint stick. Okay, so the first step is you need your clay. And if you have the giant block of clay, you might have to cut it down a little bit and then cut it in half so that you get a, a chunk. Otherwise, it's a little harder to work with. Um, but if you still have your chunk of clay like this, you can use that. And I gave you guys a wire tool, but if you still need to use your string, you can use that. So we want um, about a pound or a three quarters of a pound. So um, two or three fingers down is what you wanna start with, I would say three, um, because clay does shrink and you want it to be a cup you can actually drink out of. And then always put your clay back in the Ziploc or in the bag, whatever bag you have, so it doesn't dry out. Okay, so I recommend that if your clay is really soft, you can just start to squish it, otherwise get ready. Toss it a few times, warn people in your house if you're doing this, you don't wake them up, and it will soften it. So yesterday we talked about wedging. You don't necessarily have to wedge this because we're not throwing it on the wheel, but it does soften it. And then just like with the pumpkin, don't set it on the table. We want a round base for our table so we can add the foot. We don't want a flat base, okay? So they all start with this round base. We don't want a flat base. So when you're creating your pinch pot form, you can do this with me if you have your clay out, you squeeze it and move it. Don't roll it, don't set it on the table. You're gonna be doing this. If you're doing the hollowing out form, you would still make a ball and then set it down and start to scoop it out. I think the pinch pot's better, but you can try the hollowing method. Okay, then for the pinch pot, you put your thumb in and then you pinch turn. This clay is nice and plastic and soft, but if your clay has dried out a little bit, we talked about how you can resaturate it and wedge it a little. So you want it to be the thickness of your pinky. So this is a little too thick and that includes the base. You don't want it really, really thick. You also want even walls. You don't want it too thin or too thick in one spot. Now remember how I said in class how to tilt your wrist inward so it stays narrow? If you tilt your wrist out, you're gonna have a summer tea bowl, a wider bowl. And you can always do that later, but it's really hard to bring it back to its form. If you already hate it, you can squish it and wedge it. So if you don't like the form, you can squish it and wedge that air out, just like in the video yesterday, okay? If you don't get the air out, oh, you heard it, right? If you don't get the air out of the clay, then it's going to um, crack or break in the kiln, okay? So after you wedge it a little, you can make back into the form, okay? And you can also pat it if your hands are curved to make that bowl form, and then you would do that pinch pot, okay? Also, it's good to work pretty quickly and turn it because you'll get a better form. And if you get cracks, no water or slip, use your fingers. Okay, now I like my fingerprint marks. You may or may not like those, it's up to you. Once you have a good form, you can go around and pinch the rim thinner. Remember, you're gonna put your mouth on this to drink out of it. So you don't want a really thick rim or the liquid will dribble out. So the rim should be a little bit thinner than your pinky width. Look at some of the cups at your house. You don't want it super thin because you cut your mouth on it when it became, when it got fired. Okay, now I'm at the stage where I can either add a foot 
or I can wait till it's leather hard and carve a foot. Okay, so if I'm going to carve a foot, I would just work on the form a little more and leave it till Monday to carve it. So this one broke in half, but you can see they carved out the foot with their loop tool or their makeshift loop tool. Um, and then this one was carved, but you can also add a coil foot. Okay, so to do the coil foot, you would need more clay. So remember, I said put it on its rim. So if you're doing a coil foot, you would take a small amount of clay. You don't need a lot. I'm going to set this aside. And you would start by just squishing it into kind of a hot dog form. And then the best way to roll out a coil is to use a consistent motion back and forth. If one side starts to get flat, I'm going to do it on purpose, just put it on its side and tap it and then try it again. So the coil should be about your pinky thickness, thickness of your pinky as well, maybe a finger. Okay. And then you might have excess clay. So you guys can use, I really like to use my scoring tool. It's a really good cutter. Okay. And then put that clay back in your Ziploc so it doesn't dry out. Okay. So now you have to slip and score. So like I said, you can add a foot or you can wait till it gets leather hard and carve a foot. So if you're going to add a foot, you need to score. And remember your new fancy tool, if you took this home with you, you can use this. By the way, if you need to come to school, I'm here today. I am teaching, but you can just go to the front and um, one of the deans or somebody can go and get you the clay today. Otherwise, we're planning on doing that next Wednesday again. Remember to always score and slip both of your forms, okay, so that they really stay attached. And then it's really also important that you are smearing or scoring that together as well. Now, this isn't attached completely. Remember that you need to score, slip, stick, smooth. So now I'm going to go around and smooth that foot on if I choose to do an added foot versus a carved foot. So this one is just a traditional T-bowl form. And I would take my time and I would smooth the outside and the inside. And it is okay if you leave your fingerprint marks and some texture, but you do want good craftsmanship. We want it wabi-sabi, but we don't want it to fall apart. So some of my kiddos would tease and say wabi-sabi looks like crap, but I think that it looks beautiful and it's kind of natural. Um, but not everybody likes that wabi-sabi aesthetic. And then you can go and smooth and take your time to really smooth it. Now, some of the details we can do when we carve it. If you want a taller foot, like in this rider cup right there, you would just make an extra little pinch pot and you would slip and score it on upside down. So it's like a pinch pot this way, right side up and a pinch pot that way. So now that you've got the basic form that you saw, you can look at some of the other forms like from your sketch and you can paddle it, you can shape it into a different form, you can work on the rim so it's higher, and lower and really work on getting a nice form. We're not going for perfection. That is not the wabi-sabi concept. All of these T-bowls have unique rims. This one has a carved out texture. So now your choice is if you want to add a press texture or you just wanna carve it. So this has a carved texture. This one has pressed and carved. So if you do wanna press some in, you would put your hand in your T-bowl and then take your object and you would press it in kind of around your form. Don't just do it in one spot. This is a 3D form, so you wanna move around your form. And you could press more than one texture into it. We don't have to guess what you used because when we glaze these, they'll look really beautiful when you can see the glaze um, melt into the textures of the form like this one did. Um, I'm not requiring 100% that you bring these in to be fired and glazed, um, but I will give you the opportunity for that. You can't eat or drink out of these or even keep them unless you fire them, okay? And you definitely can't eat or drink out of them until they are glaze fired. So you could bring them in for a bisque firing, the first firing, and then you could put watercolor on them, but they would not be waterproof for food safe. So remember that you would bring them in, I would bisque fire them, and then we'll talk about glaze next week and how you'll be able to glaze them. So once you've made this form, you need to either wrap it in plastic or take your Ziploc, but we don't want to have it completely wet. 
So after you put it in your bag, this one's really big, close it a little bit. Don't leave it wide open. Close it a little bit, but leave a li it so a little bit of air can get in there. And then maybe check it tomorrow or Sunday to make sure that it hasn't gone too dry. And then once it's at that leather hard stage, then you can close the bag completely until Monday when we carve it. Okay, so you definitely want to make a tea bowl today if you have clay. So remember, leather hard is where it's not super floppy and flexible, but I can still press my thumbnail into it or carve into it. That's what we're going for because we want to be able to carve into it on Monday. Okay, so that's a basic tea bowl. Give me a sec. I'm going to stop recording. It takes a minute to do it. 